This is Pink Talks, the place where we discuss intersectionality and human rights. Hello and welcome to today's episode about gender-based violence in the Ukraine. My name is Inga, my pronouns are she, her. And welcome our today's guest. Uh, shortly, as we can see all around the world, just like any other catastrophe or conflicts and wars, the war in the Ukraine is ongoing source of danger, especially for those who are the most vulnerable um, populations. At the same time, their trouble often um, invisible and overseen. So there's it's likely that there is no insurance against violence as everyone, regardless gender, nationality or status, can face physical, sexual and psychological or economic and social violence. And in today's episode, we welcome Alina Kaslova. I hope I pronounce your name right. Please correct me. <laughs> um, the creator of the, of the psychological assistance at the NGO Girls in the Ukraine. She's a clinical psychologist, trainer and expert in human rights protection for nine, nine years already. Um, Alina cooperates with the National Poli Police in combating violence and resolving, co resolving family conflicts. And she's involved in conducting pre-trial interviews of minors and providing pre-trial expert pre-trial uh, decisions. At the moment, Alina works as a psychologist and trainer in the prominent CSO. Maybe you can uh, explain later what this is. Um, such as uh, individual practice with clients, groups, and sessions for support, supporting teams in different organizations and educational trainings uh, about prevention of gender-based violence. So welcome and thank you so much for joining. <laughs> And maybe you can start with a little introduction of yourself and tell us a bit about how you got engaged in NGO Girls, but also in the work you're, that you're doing in the moment. Yeah, thank you for this meeting and the invitation. Uh, my name is Alina. I have um, two sides of my work because in one hand I am a psychologist so I have my own private practice in which I work a lot with teens and uh, adults who have experience of uh, different types of violence. And in another hand, I uh, have this experience in the NGO Girls, uh, where I am a coordinator of psychological project. So in our team, we have more than 60 psychologists who work with different topics. It's about uh, war-related topics. It's about gender-based violence. And we work a lot with uh, cases such as sexual abuse in the situation of the war. When we speak about sexual abuse and rapes against Russian soldiers. So we have very different topics. And now we think a lot about sexual education in Ukraine because we understand that this uh, step is the first step how we can prevent gender-based violence because for example in the situation of the war we understand that we have a lot of aggression and very often these feelings of aggression it can be unfortunately the first step about family violence because we understand that sometimes we don't know how we can prevent this and how we can speak about this. And we think that if we speak about sexual education, about how we can build our relationships, it can be like the first step how we can prevent it. Mm -hmm. It's a very, I think, sustainable approach because uh, that's where it starts, kind of. Um. Okay, thank you. And drawing on the current situation in the Ukraine, could you maybe first short give an overview on the people you are working with or you support? Mm -hmm. uh, we work a lot with different people. So we work with children, we work with adults. And as I say, we, it's, it's very nice. So you can save me and I will go to my neighbor. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, we uh, well, we have such topics as gender-based violence, and we have go 
affected people. So, and we understand that all Ukrainians are war affected people because we live in the situation of the war. Even if we, for example, live in the west part of Ukraine where we don't have such active uh, front line and active uh, war situation. And uh, we work with men, women, with children because very often people ask us, uh, do you work with men? Because we, uh, our name is Angel Girls. <laughs> And very often people think that we work only with the girls, but not. And even in the, our team, we have a lot of men. So it's okay for us to work with different people, with different ages, with different topics. Because very often people can, um, they can give this psychological help with their case. For example, um, for example, I need psychological help because I feel some anxiety. And then, for example, five or ten consultations, they can speak about their experience of the violence. So very often people, they don't go to this consultation in, the, in this time with the topic of the violence. They can speak about this even for a very, very long period. For example, in the beginning of the of uh, war, we have a lot of we had a lot of cases from women who had such experience of violence even in their childhood. So now they can be forty, fifty years old, and only now they can speak about the experience which forty years ago. So it is um, that we don't understand the situation of the war. It can be retraumatized in some way people and they can speak about the experience which were very 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 long ago mm -hmm. it's very interesting and also like i didn't know that you are working also with men for example because of course yeah. when you think about uh, i mean most commonly if you think about gender vice violence you tend to go to think about women or girls that are affected but of course and because now we have uh, a new experience because when we speak about the economical bank and our economy we understand that our women they have a lot of masculinity because a lot of our men are in the war in the front line it's more than one million person of people and we understand that a lot of women they meet and they go to um, to some work position in which they don't work. And even in this case, I understand that, for example, in our work we see that a lot of conflicts in uh, in the families they based on this because a lot of women they they have more power now. And very often, and for example, if we speak about the economy, we understand that sometimes a man, they can't find a new job. And for women, it can be more easily. But it can be like the first step for some conflicts and gender-based violence in the family. So you were just saying that also women gain more power. In the last year, so different forms of violence can also appear through different genders, right? So, okay. Um, could you maybe explain or name different types of violence that exist or which are different forms of violence that you are experiencing in your work? No, we work a lot with psychological violence because uh, it's like the first step in the violence circle. But we have a lot of economical violence because uh, we have some problems in the economy of the pain. And we understand that sometimes uh, people, they don't have enough money for their lives and they can use economical violence. It, it's sometimes about sexual violence, but we work with such experience which was some years ago for people. And now I think that a lot it's about Mm, emotional violence even in the families, for example, from the parents to children, from children to parents, because uh, we have a lot of aggression, we have a lot of different emotions and feelings, 
and very often adults they don't know what they can do with this and children especially teens they have a lot of feelings a lot of uh, even the feeling of loneliness and they very often they don't understand how they can do with this because we understand that for example for teens and children a lot of teens and children they move to other cities or they move to other countries and for often teens they say that okay i'm alone and for parents for example it's not a problem because they say okay you can go for example to the street and to, to meet somebody and teens said that okay i don't want to go to the street and speak with some people i want my friends and very often parents they don't understand this moment and teens um, feel that uh, parents don't understand them and they don't know what to do with this so i think that say, this is the main uh, problem in our psychosocial area in the society you said uh, it's about i think uh, the society it's about for example teachers because i um, I was in some projects uh, about teacher and about educational programs and very often teachers they don't know what to say to these children and for example we understand that in the stress children they have some problems with cognitives uh, um, with cognitive different functions because um, we live in the stress and very often when teachers they say okay for example you don't you can't do this exercise but you could do this uh, some months ago and they it's not about like to help and to support children with their problems it's like to uh, not to help them with this and to say okay you want to do what you did for example some months ago but children or teens even adults have their own problems and problems with mental health which sometimes we find see but mm -hmm. but adults yes they have their own problems and they don't see these problems of teens mm -hmm. would you say that violence in any form is still stigmatized especially in the ukrainian context uh, i think and um, I believe that now it's not most it's so it's not a problem to speak about this because we have a lot of different projects and we have a lot of different information materials and people they say they think they understand that they can speak about this but yes if you speak about villages it's a very big problem because in the villages they don't understand what they can do sometimes uh, they understand that it's their normal life mm -hmm. to have for, for example violence because their mother has their bird mother had such experience and it's a problem mm -hmm. so now maybe because yes i think that we have a lot of projects and people they have more power to speak about this and we have a lot of cases in the media so people they read that for example psychologists help can help in such situation mm -hmm. so that there is like this um awareness that psychological help can help with certain experience of violence so it's not uh, it's a more common thing to do to reach out for psychological help, you would say? I, yes, I think that such stories, a lot of different posts in social media or in the news, they, people can see that, okay, we have different, um, different ways how we can go from such experience that we don't need to stay in such violence uh, or abuse uh, relationships that we, for example we can we have a lot of shelters we can we have social rooms so we can do this and it's okay to to use it and to speak that oh, i have such experience mm -hmm. um 
do you sometimes experience in your work that people are not open for psychological support or any form of support in case of violence? Uh, sometimes, uh, yes. And I think that these times when people, they don't uh, understand about such experience. So sometimes people think that, okay, yeah, it's okay to have the violence in the family. And they don't go to the psychologist to speak about this because it's their normal life. Sometimes uh, people can uh, think that, for example, uh, um, police or psychologists, they can't help because it's my story and they don't have such experience. So yes, we have a lot of stereotypes, but now we have some, th some changes in this way. So um, I think that maybe it's my like bubble, my world, because we have a lot of such cases. And I see that sometimes, uh, even very often, people uh, say that, okay, if uh, you need some articles, so we can speak about our experience. And uh, some years ago, people didn't speak about this because they afraid that somebody can uh, know about such experience. We have a lot of uh, social projects and podcasts with people who have such experience. So these voices, we have a lot of such voices who are not afraid to speak about this. And I think that it's a very, it's not very good that people have such experience, but it's very good that they speak about this. Yes, for sure, for sure. You said in the last years a change, could you say, or could you tell why, or what kind of made this change? Um, I have only my uh, thoughts, for example, because uh, I think that uh, in some way we depend on bloggers' life and when bloggers can speak about the experience of violence, for example, so our people, they think, okay, it's not okay, and so that we have such relationships and they can see that, okay, we have different ways how to how to be in such cases. Or when, uh, I think, so it's my thoughts, that we have a lot of psychological support now, a lot of projects, a lot of social pro projects, non-government organization who work in such field. So it can uh, be as a new part of this. So people can understand, okay, we have a lot of projects and they can, for example, go for this support, uh, and for example, I can phone for some uh, uh, helpline and to have this support. And very often, uh, what we see is that uh, as such, uh, women or men, they use their children in what way? They go for psychologists and they say that, okay, my children need some psychological help. And they see if it works or not works and how people can speak with them. And then after that, they can see, okay, I need psychological help too. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's a bit ironic now, but it's good at least to have this um, first step of maybe first helping the children and also being curious about, but yeah. It's about the safety because I understand if, for example, if for children this psychologist is okay, so maybe it's okay in real life yeah um would you say that the since the war on set that it also changed regarding how people perceive psychological help i don't know if we speak about for example the country but i see that we have a lot of such cases and maybe now we have a lot of new cases. Um, as I know that, for example, if we speak about sexual abuse and rapes against Russian soldiers, so we will have such cases, for example, five, ten years, because now people, uh, they need to, to change their lives and they need to, to prevent their needs. For, I mean, for example, food, water, safety, home, and then when they will be 
more in safety, maybe they can speak about this experience. So now, for example, in our NGO, we work with such experience, uh, which were many, many years ago. And it's not uh, something that, but, but if you speak about now, uh, we have such cases when parents, they come for um, psychological su support because they say that I understand, I, I'm not okay. And I understand that, for example, my children, uh, they are not okay too. And very often, for example, such parents can say that I understand that I can use for example, physical violence against my children and it's not okay. So when adults understand that it's not okay, that they, for example, use their aggression and power um, towards their children. Mm -hmm. It's already a huge step to acknowledge that it's not okay and that it's, uh, maybe my aggression have a different source and I shouldn't leave it on the children or put it on the children. Um, and how is it for you to work in this area? Or like, how do you cope? Because you hear a lot of very also terrible cases or touching cases. How do you cope with that? Uh, for example, I have a lot of sports in my life. But uh, in another way, I use such cases when I have trainings for different organizations. Because, yes, it is terrible, but sometimes people, as you say, they live in the pink world. So they sometimes think that we don't have such cases. And when we speak with them that, okay, for example, if we speak about gender-based violence for humanitarian sector, how people who use humanitarian aid, they need to understand what to do in such case. If, for example, some person speak about such experience. And very often I hear that, oh no, we don't have such cases. Oh no, our people, they don't have experience of the violence. And we speak about such cases with uh, which we work. So very often our colleagues, they say, okay, maybe we don't know uh, some situation. So I, I name it my prof deformation <laughs> because I speak a lot of about such cases. Uh, with donors, with uh, other humanitarian organization, um, but I think that uh, it's the stories of the people, and we, in some way, they need to be um, to be in our sector, and uh, so we hear them, and they need to speak about this. Yeah. it's a very nice way to cope, and it's I mean. It's true. <laughs> um, as I understood it right, you also have, you are in contact or in like working also with the police or official encounters. Um, how do you perceive the, how they are dealing with the cases of domestic violence? Because in some countries it's a, a big issue that it's not taken serious, for example, or they're not getting um official support for that or legal support mm -hmm. yeah we have a lot of trainings for police for example because uh, they know the judgment system but we speak a lot about psychological help because for example you know that for good health we need to go to this person um, and we have um, this way for 24 hours after the violence because if we need if we want to help this person after this 24 hours so person can say that oh i don't i don't need this help because i love him and it is our family we need we don't need your help and uh, as we speak about stereotypes i think that we all people even if we work, for example, as psychologist or in the police, and very often we have our own stereotypes. So yes, sometimes I think in every country we have such problems that sometimes police they don't help in situation of domestic violence because sometimes they even don't know what to do. And for example, in from our side, we get a lot of trainings for them what to do in the psychological. Uh, 
as a psychological assistant in these cases. Uh, but uh, as I know, police they work in this field and they can help even now with such cases. Um, what are important facts that you or the organization is trying to transfer in these trainings, as you said, like what to do uh, or how to assist people that experience domestic violence? But you also mentioned stereotypes, for example. Yeah, we have some uh, blogs, so we speak a lot about stereotypes of these people. I mean, about, for example, police. Uh, what stereotypes they have, how these stereotypes they can um, can use in their can be used in their work. For for example, people can uh, think that violence is not the real fact. And for example, if they have such cases in their work, they will think that okay, it's it's not a violence, it's a conflict. So we have such. Uh, such topics too, because a lot of people they say that it's a conflict, it's not a violence. And we speak a lot about uh, the violence, about the children, that for example, if the child even hears some noises, if this child is a survivor of the violence too. Because uh, this child uh, is in the situation of the violence. So we speak about this, about psychological, uh, moments of the violence, why people can do this, uh, what feelings have for people who have such experience. And we speak a lot about how we can uh, use this first psychological aid when we understand that only the police can be in such situation, like in the first call, and what how they can help the people who are in the situation. And uh, we speak about mental health of police because we understand that a lot of we all people and we all have sometimes we are now it's because we work with physical health. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I also can imagine that especially in the police it's still a quite common thing that it's not that much talked about their mental health. At least, uh, for example, what I experienced in Germany or in Portugal, that it's not a quite common address topic still. Um, for example, I know that in our police we have a lot of psychologists, so they speak and have such help in their structures. But now we have a lot of external trainings for police about mental health in the situation of the war because uh, they have a lot of different work and we understand that they need uh, they need this information how they can help themselves and their colleagues yeah. so, very important Maybe you can just explain because uh, in the beginning or in the introduction, you said that you're working for the CSO. Can you just quickly say what it is? Yes, it's about non government sector. So we have a lot of different trainings, for example, for non government sector in Ukraine and external trainings, for example for UNICEF, Caritas, so very often some donors, they ask us uh, to help them with capacity buildings for organizations who work in Ukraine now, in the humanitarian sector, and we provide a lot of uh, trainings for them um, in this field. I have one more question about the, because you also said something, I mean, like you, the psychological care, then the part of the training, but also you start providing or you started providing sexual education um, yeah. more in schools or where do you provide it? Uh, we have a team of tutors who, and we have a lot of materials uh, which we write uh, uh, about sexual education for children, for parents and for teachers. And we provide such uh, lessons when some organization or school ask us 
And now we provide uh, this uh, in the national system because, for example, a lot of people say that uh, in our schools we need such lessons of sexual, sexual education. And now we uh, develop our programs and we want to go to the national and government sector uh, to speak that uh, we have such materials, we have our lectures, and we can. Uh, for example, have this TOT for teachers, and they can use our materials uh, to use in their schools to provide these lessons for um, for children. Because very often teachers they say that okay, we want to do this, but we don't have such materials. For this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do you? How would you connect it to that? It decreases, for example, sexual abuse or sexual violence? So we speak that, for example, in this sexual education, we speak a lot about our bodies, about our borders, and uh, it uh, can help because people they, and children they understand that, for example, I can say no. Because in our country, it's uh, something very magic to say no to some people. And uh, it's like the first step when you can speak and say that if something is not okay for you. So you can say that, okay, it's not, it's not okay for me, it's not comfort for me, and it can be it's one of the steps how we can prevent the violence because, for example, we speak about sexual violence in the couples, where often women, they can't say that it's not comfort for me or it's not okay for me. And we understand that it's like such skills is are from the child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to kind of also empower people to say no and set their boundaries, and also to react to these boundaries and how to react to a no, probably you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. If you would kind of like looking at domestic violence and in your experience and um, uh, how would you kind of, or what are important things to take in mind either if you have a person in your environment that might experience domestic violence or by yourself, like what are important parts to consider or to if you want to reach out for support or you want to give support? Um, so then I think that the first is uh, that even if we have such a similar experience, we can't understand how it, it is for these people. So we can speak only about, for example, some contacts. So we can't say that, okay, I understand here because we don't understand uh, what feelings have this person and uh, it's about um, if we for example work in the humanitarian sector to have contacts of different projects who work in this field because sometimes we can hear such cases but we can't uh, uh, understand what contacts i can use for this so it will be perfect to have uh, the list of some organization Amends and for phone numbers to to speak with these people and to give it to example this number. Mm -hmm. mm. Let me just I think I had one question in mind, but I lost it actually. Uh, I because. Um, do you have any kind of, not, I don't want to say tips, but kind of recommendations for people that are, for example, because I can, like, as I know that sometimes domestic violence is, is not that visible, also not to the person that is affected by maybe, as you said in the beginning, for example, emotional violence, because the teenagers or the children feel that there is something wrong, but maybe can't uh, grasp it kind of um, that for the person itself how can they check for example if they are 
experienced, if they did experience uh, any form of violence? Uh, for me, it's um, to, to check how, how it is comfort for you, these relationships, uh, your commun communication, because if a uh, person understands that it's not okay for me, for example, some uh, partner, he or she use uh, some uh, not, uh, not okay words for me, or they can use, for example, uh, uh, physical power. So it's the first step to check. Uh, then it's uh, to check uh, the society uh, which are near these people. I mean that, for example, if uh, if I have friends and if I can speak with whom I uh, want. Because very often when we speak about um, domestic violence, uh, such people, they don't have their friends and they don't have their society because uh, the person who um, who does this violence, he or she can say that, okay, you don't speak with your friends anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's... Uh, I think it's about it's the main point to check myself and to check uh, my friends if I have them and how I speak with them and it's about my thoughts so very often in domestic violence we can think that okay uh, what I need to do so my partner will be in the good mood and to understand that the mood of my partner it not depends on me and my acts my words Mm -hmm. So it's like the main three points. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And maybe to kind of wrap up, what would you wish for the future? Because uh, you said, for example, in the beginning, it changed already that it's a, a topic that is more discussed and there are more support systems, either in trainings or any forms. What would you wish for the next for the future? I'd like to say that uh, we don't have the violence, but I understand that in, it can't be in such way. So um, for me, it's that the children and teens have this sexual education and understand that their body is their body and that they have their own borders and they can say no and they can say what they need and want in their relationships because unfortunately very often for example in my practice girls uh, who are teenagers they say that for example violence in the in the romantic relationships it's okay because it's about uh, some uh, dramatic moments and I understand that even now they say that it's okay because it's about feelings, emotions, it's about some kind of drama. And uh, for me, it will be perfect if girls and uh, boys, uh, they don't think that it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so your hope is a bit that it's kind of outgrowing through generations that are more yeah. aware of these topics. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I covered all my questions for this episode. Is there anything you would like to address? Or Maybe not too afraid to speak about such experience because now we have a lot of organization in the whole world who can help with such cases uh, and they can, um, it can be helpful because it changed our life. And uh, I mean, if we speak about such experience, it can change it, not only our lives because uh, people can hear such stories and they can understand that it's not okay for them to Yeah, so I think it's I, the, the last part of the sentence was part, so it's not okay to. I I mean that if we speak about our experience, so uh, other people can understand that it's not okay to have 
the violence in our relationships and they can speak about the experience too. So we can be as like the first people person in some society who can speak about this and then other people understand that okay I have such experience too and it's not okay not to speak about this and it's not okay to have such experience I mean to think that violence is okay yeah yes um, thank you very much um, for sharing these thoughts your thoughts and also your ex work experience yeah. work experience with us and thank you for the work that you are doing I think it's very important and um, yeah we will attach the link and the connection and where's more information about the organization that you're working with in the comments and we hope you enjoyed it too <laughs> Thank you for listening to Pink Talks. Before we go, show some love for our favorite podcast by leaving us a comment and subscribe to the channel. We are Young Educators, a non-profit organization working on human rights, gender equality and active citizenship. And this podcast was created with the support of our team. Ana Catarina Caldeira. Laura Staffia. Inga Schmidt. 